Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to learn about another literary device that writers and poets use in order to make their writing more interesting. And this one is called similes. So today our lesson is called Understanding Similes. Okay everybody, so I'm sure you've heard a simile before, but you just didn't know that it was called a simile. A simile is a comparison. That's basically all it is. And it's a comparison that uses two special words, like or as. If you have those, one of those words used in a comparative sentence, then what you're reading is a simile, okay? So it helps readers because if something is compared to something that they already know, then you can understand that new thing much better. Okay, so it says writers use it to help the reader understand a character, an object, or point of view by comparing those subjects that we don't know to something the audience already understands. So if I said, um, I was as hungry as a horse, that might have been something that you've heard before, hungry as a horse. Well, if you understand that a horse eats lots of hay throughout the day, then you can understand that I must be really hungry because I'm as hungry as a horse, okay? So it's a comparison that helps the reader understand something new that's being presented. Now, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite books is The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. And Catherine Applegate is a pro at using similes. So what I've done is I've collected a few very special lines that use similes from her book so that we can understand what similes look like, okay? And this is actually in your um, poetry booklet that was found in your learning package. So you can un uh, turn to understanding similes and we'll work through this together. Now all you need for this, and I say use a red pencil crayon to circle the comparison word in the sentence, which is like or as. If you don't have a red pencil crayon, that's perfectly okay. Just use your pencil, it doesn't matter. All right, but I'm gonna use my red pencil crayon. All right, so let's read the first line. Gorillas are as patient as stones. Humans, not so much. Did you hear the comparison in the first part, in that first sentence? Gorillas are as patient as stones. There it is. What is being compared in this sentence? If you thought gorillas are being compared to stones, then you're right. Now I want you to imagine a stone. What is it doing? Is it just sitting there doing nothing? Well, then you can imagine when they say gorillas are as patient as stones, that just means a gorilla can sit there doing nothing very patiently for a long period of time. Can humans do that? Not so much. All right, so that's one comparison. I understand what gorillas are like based on the, what it's being compared to, okay, which is stones in this sentence. Okay, the next sentence that I pulled from her book, The One and Only Ivan, says this. When I dragged the crayon across the paper, it left a trail in its wake like a slithering boot blue snake. Okay, did you hear the comparison word of like or as? I bet you did because it's right here, all right? When I dragged the crayon across the paper, it left a trail in its wake like a slithering blue snake. Okay, so what is being compared in this sentence? Well, I'm seeing a slithering blue snake is being compared to something. It's being compared to the crayon being dragged across the paper. So when, in this story, Ivan is an artist. He's a gorilla and he's an artist. And when he pulls his blue crayon across the paper, it looks like a slithering blue snake. So that's the comparison. If you can see a blithering, slithering blue snake, then you can see what Ivan's drawings would be like, okay? Here's your next sentence. Bob is tiny, wiry, and fast, like a barking squirrel. His tail moves like weeds in the wind, spiraling, dancing. Now, just so you know, and you'll find this out if you listen to story time on the website, but Bob is a dog. Okay, everybody, did you hear the comparison? In fact, there's two in this one. Bob is tiny, wiry, and fast like a barking squirrel. Did you hear the word like used in that first sentence? Bob, the dog, is being compared to a barking squirrel. If you can imagine the size and the looks of a squirrel and pretend that it's barking, that's what Bob looks like. So they're comparing a barking squirrel to Bob so that you can understand what Bob looks like. 
His tail moves like weeds. There's a comparison again. It's comparing his tail to weeds in the wind. Can you imagine weeds moving in the wind, spiraling and dancing? Well, that's what his tail looks like when he moves around. Okay, so we are able to understand something we don't know because it's being compared to something that we can imagine or something that we do know. And that's the power of a simile. It allows us to understand what things are like because of the comparison. Okay, so now here's your job. I want you to read the rest of these sentences in your own time. And then you are going to circle like or as. And while you're at it, why don't you underline the two things that are being compared? Kind of like what I was doing. All right, just so that you can see what's being compared in this. So I hope now that you have a little bit better understanding about what a simile is. Two things being compared and specifically using the words like or as. Okay, so now in your poetry booklet, the next page will look like this. In fact, it won't look totally like this. Yours will have said your mom. This is a sheet I often use for Mother's Day. However, because of Mother's Day fell a lot earlier than I could get to this form, I've decided that we're gonna use it to describe you. And this is gonna be the graphic organizer for our poem, I am as, okay? So this graphic organizer is gonna be about you. So if you could take your pencil or a pen, cross off the R on your, and cross off the word mom. So it becomes this. Choose eight adjectives that describe you and write them on the lines. In the box, brainstorm a list of things that can also be described using that word. So we're gonna make a comparison between you and the things that you list in the boxes. Now, here are some adjectives. Adjectives are describing words. They describe nouns. So here's a whole bunch of them. There's the word quick. Would you consider yourself to be quick? If so, write it on one of the boxes, in the, one of the lines in the boxes. Slow. Would you consider yourself to be slow? Then write it on a line. Small, are you considered to be small? Write it here. Large, happy, sad, weak, strong, loud, quiet, brave, shy, tame, wild, lazy, and busy. You only have to pick eight of them because there's only eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Choose eight adjectives and write them on the lines, please. Okay, so you'll choose eight. I'm gonna tell you which ones that I would choose for myself. How would I describe me, Miss Lamb? And you might have some ideas for yourself about how you would describe me. Am I happy? I would say so. I'm a happy person, I try to be happy. Am I strong? I'd say so. Uh, I'm not that loud, although you might think so. I'm actually pretty quiet. I like my quiet time. I'm brave. My kids come to me when they're scared. I'm definitely shy, okay? Uh, am I tame? Well, I don't know. Wild? Definitely not. Lazy? I certainly can be, especially on a Sunday or Saturday afternoon. Busy? Absolutely. Gosh, finding time to relax is, is very difficult. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What other word do you think would describe Miss Lamb? Well, how about quick? Okay, so because I do have to get to work and I have to move quickly in the morning, so how about that? Those are my eight adjectives. So your job is to choose the eight adjectives that apply to you. So go to this sheet in your learning package in your poetry booklet, put a little star or a number beside eight adjectives that describe you. Remember, adjectives are words that describe nouns. So what words would you use to describe you? You don't have to do all of them. You are not all of these words, you are some of these words. This is just your draft. I chose quick, happy, strong, quiet, brave, shy, lazy, and busy. I'm gonna take those words and write them on here. So I'm quick. Okay, uh, what else did I say? Happy, definitely. Okay, what else am I? Strong, I would say so. My kids would think so. Quiet, I would consider myself quiet. Uh, brave, shy, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm writing my adjectives down here. Brave and shy, lazy and busy. 
All right, now the next job, I'm gonna put this just underneath for a little while. This will be my draft, so I'm gonna get to that in a minute. So now here's my job. I have to think of things that are quick. Not me, other things that are quick. Would I consider a cheetah running over the savanna or running through the desert? So a cheetah, how about chasing its prey? A cheetah chasing its prey. What else is fast? Can you think of other things that are fast? Uh, ch uh, a child running in a race. Now, I want you to take note of something here. I am not just writing one word, a cheetah, a child. Boys and girls, that would be boring. I want you to describe what the thing you're comparing to is doing. What's the cheetah doing? Chasing its prey. What's the child doing? Running in a race. You can think of lots of things that are quick. List them, but don't just put one word. How about happy? What are some things that are happy? How about a puppy given a new toy? A puppy with a new toy. How about, I don't know, a child getting a new video game? Come up with two or three ideas and write it in the box. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm just listing things. I did not just say a puppy or a child. I'm describing why the puppy's happy. A puppy with a new toy, a child getting a new video game. Be descriptive. Use imagery so people can see what it is you're trying to say. What about quiet? A lion sneaking up. A lion sneaking up on a gazelle. Do lions eat gazelles? <laughs> I should have checked that first. How about uh, an ant crawling across the floor? I can't hear that. Okay. I think I'm going to stop there because you get the idea. All right, you're going to fill up your eight boxes. This is your planning page. But once this is done, this is a breeze. Because watch what I'm going to do now. This is my draft. I'm only going to fill in the lines where I've starred or put a number because that's me. So quick as, oh, I'm going to write this. Quick as a cheetah chasing its prey. There it is. There's my first line of poetry. I'm going to skip these three lines because I don't think that's me. It might be you, but I'm going to go down to happy. Maybe I'll do happy as a puppy getting a new toy. That was my one of my ideas. Do you see? Happy, a puppy with a new toy. I'm going to use that one. Happy as a puppy with a new toy. I remember how excited Zoe gets when she gets a new toy. Okay. This is my second line of poetry. When I do my good copy, I'm gonna write this line first, followed by this line. Strong as, well, I didn't fill that one in yet. Can we think of things that are strong? A gorilla living in the jungle, like Ivan. Gorillas are very strong. Okay, so I will of course have done my planning first, but I'm gonna take that idea and put it under strong, a gorilla, strong as a gorilla living in the jungle. Or I could be more specific, in the Congo. All right, that's my first, second, and third line of poetry. I would keep going using my graphic organizer as a guide. Remember, you want to have at least two or three ideas so that you have something to choose from. Choose your best one to put in your poem and this will become your poem. Now it says put it all together and you've got, guess who? Julia, that's me. So now when I write my good copy poem and you're going to write your good copy poem in Seesaw, you would, I would write this, quick as a cheetah chasing its prey, happy as a puppy with a new toy, strong as a gorilla living in the Congo. And of course I would fill in my other lines, my other uh, five lines, Put it all together and you've got Julia and your name will be the last line of that poem. All right, 
So step number one, familiarize yourself with what similes are by filling in this page. We've already done three together. Go through each line, find the, descript the comparing word as or like. Step number one. Step number two, take out this page from your poetry booklet, cross off the R and the mom. It's going to be all about you, everybody, okay? Choose eight adjectives from this page that you think describe you. Put the eight here, okay? Then I want you to take some time to list two or three things per box that are this thing. What is strong? What is quiet? And so on, okay? Choose your best ones and simply write it on your draft. Once you've got that, I'm going to be asking you to do your good copy in Seesaw. You're going to type it out. All right, everybody, that's similes, comparisons using like or as. Have fun with it. Think about who you are as a person, all right? Decide with which adjectives actually describe you, okay? It won't be all of them. You only have to choose eight. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.